All right, hey guys, welcome back to the Channel Book Prado. Now, I actually sold uh, the, the Prado. We've actually upgraded to the, the big Ranger here. So um, I said I was going to get one, but here it is. So um, yeah, this is uh, mine, totally mine. All right, just kidding. This is actually a rig rundown, and today we've got Liam. Who, um, this is actually his car. There you go. And um, we're going to do a rig rundown on it, and the, it's got a mad canopy, uh, canopy set up. So yeah, we're going to look through it, and um, we'll show you around. Stay tuned. Okay guys, we're now at the front of the car. Now Liam's going to show us uh, bull bar lights, everything, aerials. So yeah, run us through what you've got here. So this is a commercial ARB bull bar. It came with the car uh, when I bought it. Um, I like it because it hasn't got the, the plastic cutouts of the normal one, but I mean, it does the job. It's a bull bar. <laughs> it's just a stop thing. Yeah. Uh, I got some cheap XTM spotties with the wiring loom. Um, they're pretty good. They're just like kings and normal LED spotlights. They just blind everyone on the road. Um, <laughs> got the massive aerial, not quite that big, but it's GME. Um, that's that's GME, 6.6 .6 DBI, uh, mm -hmm. does the job. That one's wired up to the UHF. That's another six uh, UHF aerial, UHF, but yeah. It's, yeah, it's um, it's only there for looks. <laughs> it's not wired up Looks it's cool. in the engine bay. So, but you gotta do it, you gotta do it. Yeah, and that's, that's cool. uh, Pretty much it. Separate for fun. So yeah, this is not the deluxe, but no. So it's a commercial. One, yeah. So I think you can only get it with um, like commercial cars. Yeah, I'm not okay. quite sure. Because the deluxe one has the cutout there. Yeah, but this is like solid. It's solid steel. It's a winch compatible as well. Oh, that's good. Um, so yeah, yeah. awesome. So we'll probably put one in eventually, but I don't really need it considering it yeah. doesn't get stuck. All right, guys. Now we're in the engine bay here, and Liam's just going to run us down uh, what's happening in here. So, so it's a 3.2 turbo diesel engine from Ford. Um, the one that's just in every Ranger, above the 2.2. Uh, as opposed to modifications, there's nothing in here. Um, not even a catch can, I know. I'm getting to it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just basically stock standard. Uh, it's had new injectors put into it though. Um, and yeah, bit of a beast. Like it. Um, yeah. So what about uh, how many Ks it's got? Uh, it's what, 200 and... 60, 70, something like that. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. It's quite high for a yeah. 2013 model PX Ranger. PX1, yeah. Yeah, PX1. So yeah. it's got the uh, good turbo in it because PX1. Oh, that's good. So yeah, yeah it's a good way to It's not got a limiter on it or something like that. Um, and yeah. what you bought it, where'd you buy it from? Uh, so I <laughs> bought this car on auction, uh, sight unseen off the internet. You know, oh, yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, it came from Sydney, came on the back of the truck. Um, it looked alright, it was very, very stock, like very stock at yeah. the top. Just um, had a tray of food Just the tray yeah. and the ball bar um, yeah. and this thing. And um, then this is redone, isn't it? Yeah, so I actually had an accident uh, <laughs> a month of owning the car. Someone mm. ran into the front of me, um, shredded the crap out of that uh, Mazda, uh, and I just had a dent in the ball bar. And it's got twisted. a new one. So it's got a yeah. brand new ball bar. Look at that. Brand new ball bar. Guys, so, lesson today. Crash into people. <laughs> Maybe not a good Crash. idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, bull bar's been redone, tray when he got it, and then yeah, pretty much everything on here he's done himself. So it's all custom to whatever. Yeah, most it's of it's done myself. Uh, mm. A couple of things haven't, but I'll, I'll, I'll mention that if it goes to a shop or not. But, um, mm. but yeah, so pretty yeah. happy with it. No, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no dramas with the engine. Um, had a big issue with the transmission. Um, mm. That's probably why I got it so cheap. It came with a blown transmission, um, but I didn't know that, and so I went on a road trip out to mm. Port Lincoln, which is about eight hours away from Adelaide. Yeah. And uh, about two hours out of the town, uh, the transmission exploded all over the freeway. It's pretty rough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> over Easter. Yeah. Um, so uh, me and Dad hooked it up to his Navara, and we trucked it back to Adelaide overnight. Um, and it basically sat in the garage for a month and a half until I could find a new box. Yeah. Um, but it's now got an upgraded gearbox in it, upgraded gears. Um, new bearings um, and yeah, like a new cooling system as well for it. So it should be alright. Run, runs like a dream now. Yeah, so far we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens, yeah. No, I'm yeah. sure that's day to life after that, you know, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Awesome. So now we're going to go on to probably the side of the car and check out what mods are there. So from the wheels and tyres, I got uh, BFG KO2s, I think they're called. Um, they're 265-75R16s on a 16 inch dynamic steel rim with the Dorito triangles. <laughs> That's all they had in stock at the, uh, at the tyre shop. Um, they do well. This is my second set of these tyres. I've had uh, had another set on my old four-wheel drive and loved them, so thought I'd go back to them. Um, 
would like to try another set someday, but at the moment, uh, these would do. Uh, so the car's got a two inch lift in it from Terrain Tamer. It's the last modification that's actually been happened to the car. It literally happened a week ago. Um, and yeah, so I've only had it a week, as I said, so don't really know anything about it, but so far, it's made the car drive like new, which is really nice. So yeah, pretty happy with it. So these are a set of towing mirrors, as you know, Matt's got some on his Prado. Um, I got these from Vic Off Road online after I smashed my mirror on the roller door <laughs> at home. Uh, they're basically just the generic towing mirrors like Clearview's, but they're just knockoffs. They come out 100 mil, go in, and they fold in. I need to go to the gym. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The indicator doesn't work because it's a PX base model. There's no indicators in the mirrors, uh, which is a bit annoying, but I think I'm going to wire them up on a switch so I can have them like clear views like the rest of the car. Uh, not clear views, clearance light. So, but yeah. Um, the only downside with these ones is they don't sit very flush on the car. As you can see it flexes there. Um, and so I had to put tape to stop the wind noise on the freeway because it sounds like you're going through a wind tunnel with the windows up. And if you've been through a wind tunnel with the windows up, yeah. How much? How much? Um, they cost about $300 I think for the pair and they came within like three days so very fast shipping mm. so pretty happy with them so far and I can see past the, tra uh, the train canopy which is nice and they look tough as yeah so now the tray in the back of the tray um, got a spare same as the others which is good for the dip uh, we got a crash bag bag oh, yeah. stealth bag 150 bucks Best bag I've ever seen and it looks good like it's, it doesn't look like you know those single bag ones that hang over the back they look a bit terrible if you ask me so this is like covers the whole tire from the sun and yeah it looks really good takes so, the tires get sun damage yeah looks nice um rear lights these look nice maxi lamps genuine maxi lamps um put them on myself so I had the old like bulb tray lamps you see on all the cheap trays I mm. uh, basically cut them off cut the, the, the housing around it off and then I got a piece of steel and basically bolted the steel to the top of the tray and then bolted the light to the tray. And I think that looks pretty sick. All custom made. He, he, he was a spark in the past, so a lot of the lights that were highly to do with that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I've wired a lot of this up, so if it burns down, it's my fault. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, no, and then it's got the, nice. the camera here, which is very useful. It's useful. I am. Um, but it's also double sided tape for the tray, so it'll fall off a minute. <laughs> we'll see how it's M3, so it'll last forever. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much all the back. There's not much here. Okay, guys, we're now on the side of the car and we're just going to run through the, the side lights here and the lights up here. Yeah, yeah. so have you seen a truck? Uh, they've got clearance lights. Have you seen a truck before? I don't know. <laughs> You've been outside? Uh, <laughs> they're basically these got the side marker lights or clearance lights here. Um, orange at the front, red at the back, floor. And then you've got the top ones on the, up, up at the top, of course, right at the top. Um, and they're just orange. And basically, I did them all myself. So, this is the first mod I actually did to the tray, <laughs> which is the car. And then this one, it's the second time I've had them up there. I used to have them and then a whole bunch of red ones running up the side, like a full, mm, that's right. full truck look. Um, but they all broke because I stepped on them when I was standing on the roof. Um, so, I redid them and yeah, I like the look of it. It looks sick down the freeway, especially at night time. Yeah, you can um, see it. And oh, I have well. got compliments from truck drivers over the UHF. Um, I think it looks pretty sick, so I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Truck drivers approved. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. But yeah, sick. awesome. Well, that, that's most of the exterior of the car now. So what, we're probably going to dive in the big bad boy here we've left last. Yeah. Um, but we might jump right now on the roof. Yeah, we're going to go on the roof. Not, not literally jump on the roof, but we're going to go up to it. Well, we can. Well, if you want to pay for it. No, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So up here on the canopy roof, as the rain starts to fall down, uh, we've got a 110 watt XTM solar panel. I put that on this week. Um, that's just to help the battery inside with all just keeping the fridge cold, so it's clean. Make sure the battery's always topped up. Uh, XTM awning. Um, yeah, so that awning is a 2.5 by 2.5 awning. Um, I had it since the start of the year and took it on a trip up to Perth, a two week trip up to Perth. And when I got home, all the rivets in the back snapped off and the awning fell off the car. Uh, so, in lockdown, the last lockdown we just had here in SA, I went through and re riveted the uh, entire awning back to the, the mounting bracket, pretty much that back plate. Um, 
and sent out. It, it works just like you, but it was a pain in the, pain in the back to try and get it to, uh, to stay on. But so far, so good. So we'll see how it goes in, in like wind. It may just snap off. Makes a good story, doesn't it? All right, guys. So now for the big main event, the big canopy. This is why you all clicked the video in the first place. So open it up and let's see what's inside. Have a look. Yeah. It's completely empty. <laughs> oh yeah, super nice. All right, so this is uh, my canopy. It's a um, 1600 by 1700 wide black powder coated canopy. So I actually remember that was a while ago. Um, I got it from Southern Toe Bars in Edwardstown. Great place, great folks. They uh, taught me out quite well. Uh, it came completely empty, so nothing in it, um, uh, nothing at all. And then over the long, June long weekend, I uh, went up to see my parents and me and dad did the fit out together over the three days. And that's everything from fitting the fridge, to put the floor in, to put the insulation in, to all that. But yeah, and so I'm very happy with it. It looks very good, in my opinion. I'm a bit biased. Basically, this is the canopy. Uh, it's pretty empty from this far back, but that's to do with weight management. Um, so you don't want any weight past the rear axle when you have canopies. So I was debating going 1200, which is about here. Um, but I think that having covered space is very important to having a tray space. Because I did uh, a Perth trip at the start of the year and I didn't have a canopy. I had an open back tray and there were days like today, it was absolutely raining. Um, and my swag got wet, my chair, all my like stuff except like the normal stuff that would sit in the back. Um, so I wanted a bit more space, so that's why we're trying to keep everything forward. Um, but yeah, so now the gear inside. So what have we got? We've got a Bushman's 85 litre upright fridge. There's a Red Arc BCDC 25 amp charger. There's a Victron Phoenix 250 watt 12 volt inverter. Uh, there's a fire extinguisher <laughs> and um, that's pretty much it. So, Bushman's fridge, 85 litres, upright fridge. I went with the upright because I'm a short fella. Um, and having a, I have a 40 litre ingle like Matt does. Um, and having that on the drop down slide is cool, but that weighs 80 kilos more than this fridge, for this fridge in the slide. And so it's all about weight, like weight, weight reduction and stuff. Um, so yeah, if you have one to come out and look inside, it basically unclips the top and it's, it just looks like a mini bar fridge. That's all it is. Mini bar fridge, three shelves. This is a, comes with this. This is a um, little ice cube maker. Literally, yeah, I've never used it. It's also frozen to the bottom of the fridge. Look how cold it is here at the moment. Um, it's empty because we're not away, so I just run it empty, but I leave it on all the time just so it doesn't mold. It's got an eight liter freezer. That's on a magnet. Uh, I have heard from uh, some other guys that run them that you can put a whole bag of Zupa Dubas in there. So summer camping is probably good. <laughs> um, we've got can holders, so you can have five cans and then you can put a two litre bottle of milk or juice in these doors and it has a uh, little mo movable slots that move like you're gonna break them, but they do move. Um, yeah, that's the fridge. Very happy with the fridge. Um, that was a Facebook buy, but yeah. So it's just, it's a lot nicer to be able to go, instead of like digging through an angle, you just open it up, hang on, <laughs> open it up, and you go, oh, I want that, close, grab it, and then just close it like that. So yeah, we'll see how it goes in the long run. It does use less power than the angle, but it does, so I'm sorry, per chilling cycle, it uses less power, but it uh, actually chills more, so in turn it doesn't. Um, but that's not a big worry when that's the only real thing on the circuit, on the house circuit. So for lighting in the canopy, we've got the King's one in the middle, which is on a switch by the switch panel here. Um, it's just a, a switch from JCAR, $15, split amperage. Um, up here, we've got the Oz LEDs dual zone switches. I call it a dual zone, it's just because it's got two. So it's got an orange uh, if you keep the bugs down and a uh, a cool white, as it's called. Um, and yeah, you can have them both on if you want to get a warmer color, but I mean, why? Just have it on one or the other. Go on to the Victron monitor here. Um, so it's a battery monitor that has a smart shunt on it, uh, on the circuit, and I can basically 
detect the amount of current being drawn from the entire um, house circuit. Uh, and when I say house circuit, I refer to the canopy because the canopy electrical circuit is separate from the cars. Um, so basically it's got a couple of modes if you want to come over and have a look. It's got the percentage here, which is basically how full the battery is. It's got the uh, how many amp hours I've lost since the last charge, how many watts I've lost since the last charge, how many amps I've lost since the last charge, and that is the auxiliary, which is the main cranking battery, and it's at negative 0.1 because the way I've wired it up is I've wired it up to the red arc trigger wire. Um, so if you were going to do this, if I was going to do it again, I would run a separate wire to the front, but because we had was I was short for time, I wired it to the trigger wire for the red arc BC DC. So that comes on when um, the car is on and it will tell you the right voltage, but it doesn't tell you the right voltage when you're here. And that's the um, main battery, which is the battery behind this panel, uh, which is just a 110 amp hour, just a normal AGM battery. Um, and then you've got how many hours left until it goes flat. So the fridge is on, so we've got 23 hours left. If this fridge was to run for 23 hours, the battery would go flat. Um, and it's back to 98%. Now, this is the normal, you can get this in two versions. You get this, this, this version or a non-Bluetooth. This is the Bluetooth version, and it comes, obviously, with Bluetooth. And you can connect to a mobile app, and you can basically see all those settings I just ran through um, at one screen. And it's got your full charge there. And, yeah, and you can set up a bunch of other things like alarms, and you can like change the display, how bright you want the display. Um, yeah, and the cool thing about Victron stuff is their stuff is connectable, like it can link together. So I've only got this and the inverter are together, now the, uh, but the inverter isn't a Bluetooth model, so it doesn't talk to the phone. Um, but you can get a, a Bluetooth dongle that plugs into it and talks to it. Uh, and then if they all talk to each other, then it literally can just manage the entire circuit and you don't have to do anything. Um, it's cool, uh, it's very expensive, it's a bit like Red Arc, but unlike Red Arc, um, the units are quite reasonably priced. So now we're on the other side. Um, this is the storage side and the display side, if you want to call it. So I've got the 900 dual pine drawers, just your generic pine drawers. Uh, I got them off Facebook for 200 bucks, so pretty happy with them. Um, they're a bit loud, but it's alright. So here, the first drawer is quite empty. Um, it's got a bunch of books. <laughs> it's all the all the gear books. It's got a cooker and a pole for my swag, uh, for my Austrail swag that goes in between. To sort of mimic the crash pad and the King's big dollar that is that. The big that is deluxe swag. Can't speak. Um, so that's good because I put that on a stretcher which I've got there as well. A Darcy sweater stretcher. In this drawer, this is my tools and spares. It's quite full. So it's got everything from like miscellaneous bits, hand wipes, I've got gear oil, I've got um, engine oil, i got all my filters, i got some rope from Telstra. Got to have your Telstra rope, otherwise what are you doing? Uh, i got my quick tool grab, i got a tool roll, i got basically everything you need and a lot of zip ties and tape. And if you can't fix it, fix it with zip ties and tape, then it can't be fixed. Um, on the display wall, this is the Victron Pure Sine Wave Inverter. It's a 12 volts at 250 watts. Um, it's made by the same guys that make the monitoring system. Um, this is the Red Arc BCDC 25D, I think. It's the solar version. Anyone who knows, you'll know what I'm talking about. Fire extinguisher, just from Bunnings. Um, it clips up there. It's almost due for a regas. That's annoying. Uh, this is my fuse hub. So this runs everything in the canopy. Uh, it's basically just all the lights, every light you see, um, and that goes to the roof um, of the car for a power socket. Um, and then we've got two USB chargers as well. Um, they're always powered, they never turn off, they're not, they're fused but they're not switched. So, and they go through here. Um, and then also on the door we've just got another one of these Oz LED lights. Um, yeah. So now we're out of the rain. Uh, interior time. So, I've just got a generic GME UHF. Uh, it came with a car, so I don't know how many channels it is. I think it's just a normal 60 channel unit. Um, it's got a little unit there, and then a big unit that mounts under the dash. You can't really see it, so that's fine. Uh, and it's got a speaker in it as well. 
Um, does the job, came with the car, it's falling to pieces. Um, might be going to XRS soon, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so that's communication. Uh, basically, I've got an EDS scanner in front of the gear stick. Um, it basically shows me load, voltage, uh, engine coolant temps to keep an eye on it in case it gets too hot, uh, and speed because the tyres are a bit bigger, but it's really just a GPS speed anyway. Um, so that's really good, it's just keep an eye on the car, make sure everything's running properly when you're touring and you're in the middle of nowhere, you don't want to have it go bang, because tone wheels are very expensive, as I know. Um, it's got a quick, easy cabin crew mount, it's just a magnet mount for my iPhone. Um, I've had them all the time, they stick on there, and it doesn't come off when you're four-wheel driving, so I pretty good, highly rate it, it's just from Super Cheap Auto, it's like 15 bucks. Um, and then I just charge it via the USB and I do Bluetooth to the radio head unit because it works better than the USB unit into this Ford unit. Um, it's just a Ford thing. Um, then I got a, up the top here, got a little like pocket. Uh, it's from MSA. Um, just got it to show, it's like $30. It's got a stubby holder, so my glasses, some electrical tape, which you never know when. And I think it's got a Perth ticket for my Perth trip. And then my hat sit on top of that. Uh, which you would have seen from the outside video. So to the roof console, or console, uh, i got six rocker switches up the top. Uh, they're all colour-coded co yeah, blue um, to match the interior. So basically we've got a spotlight switch for the front spotlights, rear lights, left lights, right lights, and then front and rear locker engagement. Um, at the moment, none of them are hooked up to anything. I don't have any lockers. I got them for future proofing. The side lights have been removed because of the canopy, canopy fit out. Uh, same with the rear, rear lights. And the spotlight switch is actually under the steering wheel. There. Um, and that's because uh, this used to be hooked up to the second battery, which used to sit in the back seat. And it wouldn't trigger the spotlights on the front because the spotlights run off the front battery and there's an earthing issue between the two. So that's why that, that is down there. But future projects, I have to rewire these switches because I used house wire, because I was on the Sparky in here. And as you can see, the house wire is pushing the switch panel down. So I'm gonna go get some automotive proper wire, always do properly, um, and uh, redo it again with a bit of thin wire so it'll all look nice. And then these all should work. And then later down the track, I'll get me lockers installed. So that's that one. Um, and that used to be where the sun holder was. So it's a quick eBay plate that replaces the sun holder and then comes with switches. So it's pretty good. Um, and now to the reverse camera, which is in my mirror, or it's clipped to my mirror. Um, so basically, I just bought this auto barn. Uh, it comes on when you put it in reverse with the uh, bars, and then also uh, it can be turned on when you tap it. Um, so you can basically tell it to come on whenever you want so you can have a look what's behind you because of the canopy I can't see out the back window um, and so it works really well because you just tap it and it comes on see who's pooning behind you and who's not um, it says no SD card because it's actually a dash cam in the rear as well I just haven't bought a dash a, a SD card because I'm lazy and don't want to spend the money on it but I should because I don't want people running up the back side of me um, yeah so that's pretty much there's not really much else in the car apart from... No, that's pretty much it. Don't have seat covers, because um, they're just too expensive. So, and this car is like an old tradie car, so the seats aren't very good anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so I think we'll head out to the back. So I needed a place to store my hat, because uh, you never know, sun, the sun's dangerous and you need to wear a hat all the time. Um, so I got this idea from uh, Seek Adventure's YouTube channel. He's just put some, like, he had rope, but I just put some jockey straps uh, up on the handles and then it sort of sits the, the Cooper hat nicely in there and it sort of just sits in there all the time. Uh, I do have to take it out in like summer days but usually I'm wearing it when it's hot outside so yeah. But I think it's pretty cool and it stores it away neatly and it doesn't get damaged so. Alright so the car has a three inch turbo back exhaust so it's three inch the whole way from the back of the turbo and it has no muffler. Um, but because it's, got, it's the turbo diesel, it's not actually as loud as the petrol, um, and I think it sounds pretty good. Um, it sounds really similar to like a big V8 79 for some reason. Uh, that could be because of the five cylinders, um, 
Doesn't sound exactly the same, but it sounds quite nice. So we'll start up and have a listen. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Now I hope you really enjoyed the rerun down on the Big Ranger here. Now if you have any questions, I'm gonna link his Instagram, go message him, any sort of stuff he's done in here you wanna know yourself. Um, and yeah, go give him a follow. It's an awesome build as you can see, and it's really detailed. And there's only more mods to come right here. So <laughs> he's only just beginning. 37s are coming around the corner. Not clickbait. Wow. Um, if you wanna uh, subscribe to my channel, that really helps me out. And uh, yeah, make sure you follow him on Instagram. And um, yeah, until next time with the next big rundown, um, we'll see you guys next time. So that's us out. Thanks. Catch you later.